Hello, Saving Grace Home School. I'm James, and today we're going to be doing a lesson looking at geometry of straight lines. You probably know exactly what is meant by a line. In this chapter, you will learn about line segments and rays and how they differ from lines. You will also learn more about parallel and perpendicular lines and how we indicate them on a diagram. Yeah, so geometry of straight lines. Line segments, lines, and rays. Line segments, measure each side of this quadrilateral. So you must measure A, B, B, C, C, D, and A, D. And then write the measurements at each side. Each side of a quadrilateral is a line segment, okay? So A, B is a line segment, B, C is a line segment, C, D, and A, D. A line segment has a definite starting point and a definite ending point. We can draw and measure line segments. Draw a line segment that is 12 centimeters long. Okay, I want you to reread this definition. So the important thing is it has a definite starting point and a definite ending point. Now we look at lines and rays. We can think of lines that have no ends, although we cannot draw them completely. So you see how they have arrows in the end here? That means they go infinitely in that direction and infinitely in that direction. We draw line segments to represent lines. When we draw a line segment to represent a line, we may put arrows at both ends to show that it goes on indefinitely on both sides. Okay, like I said, so if you were to draw this line, you actually can't because it would, it would just go on um, until infinity, basically. So that's why we draw a line segment. And then we show that it's a line and not a line segment by putting the arrows because a line has no ends. The word line is used to indicate a line that goes on in both directions. We can only see and draw parts of a line. A line cannot be measured, okay? So very important um, difference. A line segment can be measured, but a line cannot be measured. Draw line AB. Did you draw the whole of line AB? Explain. So you would have drawn the whole thing if you put the arrows on. We can also think of a line that has a definite starting point goes on indefinitely at the other end. This is called a half line or a ray. Okay, so a ray has a definite starting point, but then it goes on infinitely in one direction. We can draw the starting point and part of a ray using an arrow to indicate that it goes on at the other end. So we have ray PQ goes on towards the right and ray DC goes on towards the left, okay? So just a quick summary of all the different lines. We have a line, let me maybe get a straight thing, a line segment, and then you would, I'll label them just now. Then we have a line, just hang on, that is incomplete. And then we have a ray. And how we differentiate between the three different kinds, a line segment has a starting point and an end point. Okay, definite starting point and definite ending point. A line goes on indefinitely in both directions. And a ray goes, has a definite starting point and goes on infinitely in the other direction or in one direction. Okay, so here we have a ray, a line, and a line segment. Um, I would recommend writing a little summary like this in your book and just write ray, ray, line, and then line segment. That's what LA stands for there. Just so you have a quick summary um, and you know the difference between all three of them. And now you're asked to draw ray EF. So you would draw something like this, E, F. Make sure you use a ruler because you are drawing lines, not things like this. Um, so yeah, I just didn't do a chair. And then did you draw the whole of ray E, F and explain? So if you left out the arrow, then you did not draw the whole of ray E, F. You only drew a segment of it. 
Do line segments X, Y, and G, H meet anywhere? No, because line segments have definite starting points and a definite ending point. Do lines K, L, and N, P meet anywhere? Yes, because remember, they go on indefinitely. So we could extend these lines and at some point they'll cross over. If you extended these lines with a straight ruler, you can actually do it. Let's maybe use blue. So if you drew this line, there we go. You can see it does cross over. Next question, do lines, sorry, do rays A, B and C, D meet anywhere? No, because they start here and they extend in directions, but they're going in opposite ways. So they're not going to cross over. So we can write no. Uh, no. Do rays F, T and M, W meet anywhere? Yes. They'll cross over somewhere over here. Similarly, um, similar to this blue one. Do lines, sorry, do rays, JK and RS meet anywhere? So we have JK going in that direction and RS going in this direction. And this one will go on infinitely. So yes, it will. It will oh no, sorry, it will not. Because they go on infinitely in one direction, but they have definite starting points. So this one will only go on infinitely this way, and this one will go on infinitely this way. So you can see that they do not cross. And the, here's the starting point of JK and the starting point of RS. So we can answer that by writing no. Okay. Parallel and perpendicular lines. So parallel lines. Two lines that are a constant distance apart are called parallel lines. Lines AG and BH below are parallel. So we have AG and GH, sorry, BH. And these are parallel. The symbol two little parallel lines is used to indicate parallel lines. So we can write AG is parallel to BH. Okay, so how you would write this if you're writing it, you would write A, B, and then if you go like this, sometimes it's a bit confusing if you write it small like that. So, because maybe you have A, B parallel with I, H. Okay, that's not the case, but then you can see it's slightly confusing. So what I'd recommend doing, you know, this is not a rule at all. It just helps become, helps show really explicitly can draw it slightly longer a b it's not a b though is it it is a g isn't par parallel with bh and now you're asked to measure the distance between the two lines at a and b at c and d at e and f and you'll find that all the distances are the same that is the definition of parallel lines. Here's some more parallel lines. Okay, draw two parallel lines. It's quite simple. We can go like this. Let's do them at a bit of an angle. Just make sure that they are the same distance everywhere on the lines. And then don't forget your arrows because we were asked to draw two parallel lines, not two parallel line segments. And then what you need to do is you need to label them. Don't forget this part where you draw something like this. There we go. That is the symbol to indicate the two lines are parallel. And then if we had to draw three, we would do the same and just add a third line. An easy way to draw it is if you have enough space, you can just um, draw on either side of your ruler. So you can, and then you know that they will be the same distance apart. Will parallel, parallel lines meet somewhere? No, they will not. Because read the, reread the definition, they're always at a constant distance apart. 
Okay, now do we think lines PQ and ST are parallel? Okay, so you guys have to check, maybe measure here and here, measure that distance, and then measure that distance there. And if they're the same, maybe measure a third distance as well, just to make check, or make check, just to make sure. Um, yeah, so just make sure by measuring maybe two or three. And then if they are the same distance from um, th the two lines, then they are parallel. So then you would write either yes or no. Draw two lines that are almost parallel, but not quite. Okay, that's quite simple. So you just draw maybe one like this. And then one like this. And you can see maybe that could be mistaken for parallel lines, but they just they will meet at some stage. Describe what you did to make sure that your two lines are not parallel. Um, I just kind of eyeballed it, but you can make some measurements if you want and um, show that they're not a constant distance apart. Can two line segments be parallel? Yes, they can. I don't know why I'm trying to write like this. Okay, there we go, that's a yes. Cool, let's move on. Are line segments DK and FS parallel? Okay, so you have to do some measurements and find out if they're parallel. Are line segments MN and AB parallel? Okay. So you guys must do some measurements and figure that one out. What can you do so that you'll be um, better able to check whether the above two line segments are parallel or not? Okay, that's a good point. What you can do is you can extend the lines. And then you can see if they are parallel or not. Can a line be parallel on its own? No. Draw a line that is parallel to the X, Y above, to the line X, Y above. Okay, so we draw that. Do not forget, because now we know the difference between lines and line segments, we need our arrows. Now we look at perpendicular lines. Lines CD and KL below are perpendicular to each other. The symbol, if you can't see that, the symbol looks like this is used to indicate perpendicular lines. So we will write CD is perpendicular to KL. How many angles are formed at the point where the above two lines meet? Four angles, okay, all of 90 degrees. So all of these are 90 degrees. That's what perpendicular means, they're 90 degrees to each other. So it will be 360 degrees, all of these angles added up. Two lines that form right angles are perpendicular to each other. Okay, that's why the symbol is like this, because they're perpendicular. So you could add that. You don't act, actually, you don't need to add that. That's not part of the symbol. Um, but yeah, you can see that that is the perpendicular symbol because they are 90 degrees. Draw two rays that have the same starting points. Okay, that's quite an interesting question. Let's do that one. So we're gonna have ray one. Draw our arrow in it. There it goes. And then let's label it um, A and B. And we'll draw a second ray, which has the same starting points, A. And we'll also draw the arrow, because remember, rays have the same starting points. Uh, sorry, not the same starting points, a definite starting point, and goes on infinitely in or indefinitely in one direction. And then we have C. So here would be the starting points, this point right, right there. Draw two rays that are perpendicular to each other and have the same starting points. Okay, so something like this. Don't forget the arrows. And then you must get in the habits of labeling them. A, B, and C, and A is the starting point. Question four, draw two rays that meet, but not at their starting points. Okay. So maybe ray, I'm gonna draw it over here, just so I have a bit more space. There's one ray and there's another ray. 
here we have two separate starting points. So I'll show now where the starting points are. Okay, and then we can label them A, B, and C, D. Draw two rays that meet, but not at their starting points, and that are perpendicular to each other. Okay, it's quite an interesting question. Let's do that. So we have something like this and something like this. Okay, and then we label them A and B and C and D. And you don't have to label them like this. You could label X, Y, W, Z. It doesn't matter. Um, and then you can just to make sure that you can, so you illustrate that it's perpendicular, you add the right angle symbol. You actually should add this. Um, otherwise, you, it, you don't know if it's perpendicular or not. So first of all, make sure you draw it correctly and then make sure you add the right angle symbol. Can you draw two rays that have the same starting points and are parallel to each other? Okay, it doesn't ask us to draw anything here. We just have to answer. I think the answer will be, right, have the same starting point no, and parallel, no. Because if they have the same starting points, so if we have one ray and then we have another ray, if it goes down there, that's not parallel over there. It would have to be the exact same ray. Maybe, I guess, technically you could. So this could be, we could have two different rays overlapping each other. Um, and then we could label it A, B. So now we have a common point, common starting point A. And um, we have line or ray AB rather, and ray AC. And the distance between the two parallel lines is zero um, centimeters or millimeters. But I'm not sure if that actually counts as a parallel line or if that would be called something else. Um, so please check with your teacher. Um, maybe I'll check and if the next lesson's also on this, I'll let you guys know. And that is the end of today's lesson.